And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I'm a big fan of traveling to some degree. I like to go out and see new things, and everyone likes to go all over the place, I suppose, and, and, and travel to some degree. And this, these games, 10 Day Series, we call them, they are games that allow you to, with a small card game, similar to the old game Racco, move around. Now this one is the fifth in the series, as I said. Before this we had 10 days in America, we had 10 days in Africa, we had 10 days in uh, Asia, we had 10 days in the USA, and now we have 10 days in the Americas, which basically covers the Western Hemisphere. And so in this game, a very simple game follows the same formula. If you've played the other games, there's nothing new to see here, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. Look. As in all the games in the 10 Day series, the map is technically superfluous in the fact that you don't, this is actually not a board that you're using in the game. You just have this in the middle for reference purposes. And I'm going to guess that most people are going to need it. Unless you live in South America and know the ge geography pretty well. But this shows you all the countries, how they're connected. It shows you which countries here uh, in Central America or, or in the Caribbean Ocean are connected with one another by dotted lines and it shows the different seas. At the beginning of the game, each player gets two of these wooden holders for the different cards that come with the game. And they say day 1 through 10, you put them together. And then you will semi-randomly be putting cards in them. You get to choose which cards go where, but since you only get one card at a time as you draw them randomly, you really can't control how well your journey is going to be set up. See, the goal of this game is to make a perfect 10-day journey from day 1 to day 10 in which everything lines up perfectly. For example, if Chile is next to Uruguay, which they're not, but if they were, then these two cards would be allowed to be next to each other at the end of the game. I'm trying to have, be able to, for example, to go from this country to this country to this country to this country and so on and so forth. There's also cards that are C's. And so if your country is next to the sea, for example, Uruguay is not next to the Caribbean Sea. But if it were, then I could go from Uruguay to the Caribbean Sea to another country. There's also airplane cards. An airplane card is allowed to connect two cards of the same color. So I am allowed to set this up here. I am allowed to go from Ecuador to a yellow airplane to Haiti because that works perfectly. And the goal of this game, like I said, is to get all 10 cards in order using the boats, using the countries, and using the airplanes. The game is very simple. On your turn, you take one of the four cards. One of these three face-up cards, or this card. You, After you take this card, you then will look at your tile rack and try to figure out where you put it. So say, for example, Bolivia is next to Brazil, so I'll replace Chile, even though Chile is next to Brazil too. Actually, yeah, let's... Let's put Brazil on the other side, so I can go from Brazil to Bolivia, and then from Bolivia to Chile. After I do that, the card that I get rid of, I stick on one of these three discard piles. And the game continues. I might draw from here, and say, oh, the Bahamas, I can't use the Bahamas, and you just discard, and your turn's over. You continue to do that until you get all ten in a row, at which point you flip them down so everybody can see them. Everybody checks to make sure that your trip is legit, and you win the game. A quick note for those who have played the 10-day series before. This one may look very difficult, especially if you take a closer look at the Caribbean Sea and you say, oh, look at all these islands. They're only connected to one or two or maybe at the most three different other islands. Why would you ever put those in the game? But you notice there's a Caribbean Sea and you can use Caribbean Sea cards and there's five Caribbean Sea cards in the deck. So you're able to transverse those pretty easily. In fact, this game allows you to go from one sea to another sea. It's called going on a cruise. So I can go from the Caribbean Sea to the South Pacific Ocean, because you can go through the Panama Canal, to the North Pacific Ocean. The only caveat is that you can't end with one of those ships. But so that's pretty neat, and it does add a different twist that this game doesn't have. I mean, that the other 10 days games don't have. So there's no cars from other games, and there's no uh, shipping lines, but there is these oceans, and that's a pretty neat thing. And it's, it's nice to see the Western Hemisphere represented. 10 Days in Americas is nothing fantastically new if you've played the other four games in the series. 
but it's more the same and it's a good system. It's good because it's geographical, it really helps you learn your geography. It's educational, forcing it down your throat, and it's a fun game. It's simple, it's a family game, plays just as well with two players as it does with three or four, and it's a lot of fun. Now, if you've seen my reviews of these games before, you'll know that I like to put them together and hook them up so I can now do 50 days around the world, although that's one large, gigantic game. Although from out of the box, you can get their games for combining any two of them and doing 20 days around the world. So, I'm, I have a lot of fun with this. I think it's great. Like I said, nothing new and flashy when compared to the other games. This one's probably flat in the middle, but still, I, you know, I'm partial to it a little bit because, hey, I live in this hemisphere, and it's a lot of fun to see all the different countries. So, I recommend it. 10 days in the Americas. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.